Hello again. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the Carla simulator. That is something that we use normally when we want to simulate the smart cars. So this talk that I'm going to give now is basically a talk that I was giving, I think, a few days ago in the CAVS 3D modeling meeting. Uh, this event was actually quite successful, so I just decided just why not to put the talk on, on the YouTube channel. So for those who are not familiar with the smart cars, basically a smart car is the main goal that we have in the future about how we want the roads to be. So the main idea is to add artificial intelligence to the way cars are driven. So basically the cars will be able to drive by themselves. At the moment we have some models like the autopilot of Tesla or we have other kinds of smart cars like the ones introduced by Google, Uber, etc. etc. They're becoming quite popular. But with the main goal that we have at the moment is to make sure that we have a completely self-driven car in the future. It will be absolutely amazing, okay? And for that, what we are trying to do is to simulate how the smart cars will behave, what different scenarios we will have. Imagine, for instance, if we want to measure whether they are respecting different regulations in different countries. For instance, in the UK, they need to drive in the left side of the road, while in Europe, they drive in the right side of the road. So these kind of regulations have to, have to change, and it's very difficult to take a normal car, a whole size car, just to put all of these things and try to check whether the system is working or not. So basically we use simulators and the simulator that we are using for this case is specifically the Carla simulator. So just to give you a small introduction to Carla, in this video you can see a little bit about how Carla is, the environment, actually it's quite rich in terms of uh, 3D modeling, buildings, etc, etc. But not only that, it also allows us to have different maps, it allows us to have different cars, etc, etc. We will see a little bit more about this during the video. So, just to give you an overview of Carla, basically Carla is a server, okay, a simulation server, and what we are going to do is to use it with different scenarios, with different cars, with different pedestrians, etc, etc. We will have a lot of different options in each specific world that we use in Carla. Also, we will have agents. The agents are going to be controlled by us or by an artificial intelligence or by a program, a script, etc. And these agents are going to be either the cars, the pedestrians, there are going to be bikes, ambulance, even the traffic lights are going to be controlled by the system. Maybe you can also even control uh, the dynamics of the weather with the system. And basically what we are going to do is to create a scenarios where we are going to test the cars and we are going to test or smart AI. Good. So just to give you an overview, every time that you connect to the Carla server, you will be using a client. Okay. In the client, you can make decisions. So for example, if you want to put like a very heavy artificial intelligence model, you can have it in your client with a strong GPU. And at the same time, in the server, you will have another strong GPU to control the Carla system. Just to let you notice, one of the problems of Carla is that it requires a lot of resources. So you will need a very good GPU to be able to run it. But that's fine. I mean, as long as you can actually work uh, with a server, maybe you just need one server with a GPU and then you can have multiple clients that might be a bit lighter, which is also good. Uh, basically, Carla is programmed in Python, so everything that you want to run is going to be a Python script, which makes things easier. And also, you will be defining the actions of the agents in this world. Okay? So just to let you know, you will be just playing with different agents and you will be just defining what the agents are going to do. Here you have the whole API of Carla and basically here you can see uh, how it's structured and how the architecture works. So basically Carla is created in Unreal 4, you have different plugins that are going to define what the server is and then you will have the clients connected to the server, the clients are going to have a C, C++ API but on top of that you will be creating Python programs. Okay, so that's how you're going to be working on Carla in general. Okay, so once you have all the system working, you need to start defining the different actors, the different parts of the system. And for that, you will have some actors that are going to be, as I mentioned, motorbikes, are going to be bicycles, cars, ambulance, trunks, pedestrians, etc. One of the good things of Carla is that you will have some blueprints. 
So basically, a lot of the things are going to be predefined by default, and you don't need to worry that much about them, okay? Which is quite good if you want to just test some algorithms, some things like that, or specific regulations with an specific AI. If you want to test all the things, like for instance, fairness, things like that, you will need to create your own actors, and you will need to define, for example, if you are trying to find bias, you will need to define the specifics of the bias before you put it inside of the simulation. But one of the good things, as I will mention later, is that Carla allows you to do that. Okay, so just to give you an overview about the mapping, basically you will have different maps or different cities. In this case, I think inside of Carla you have like about 10 maps by default, and inside of the maps is when you can put your systems to navigate. The maps will define roads, will define lanes, traffic lights, etc., etc., so it's going to be a very rich environment to test. And also you will have the system, the traffic system, controlled by different APIs. So basically you can use it to coordinate the traffic, which is quite good. Then, one of the things that is more important for us is that you can actually put your own sensors and you can put inside of the sensors different measurements. So for example, you can have a measurement for the accelerometer, you can have the gyroscope, you can measure the position of the car, you can measure, uh, you can check the camera, you can check the LiDAR, you can have a radar to check which things are closer to you or which one are farther. You also have a sensor for collisions, so every time that a collision happens you have an event in Carla and you have multiple different sensors that you can use inside of the system, okay? And one of the things that is important is that when the sensors are not based on events, basically you will be taking a measurement per frame. And normally you operate Carla with about 30 frames per second, so you will, you can imagine that we will have a lot of data every time that we want to do anything. So let's have a look to how the client-server interface works. So here you just have a small client, in this case it's a police car, okay, that I'm just driving in my client side, and in the server you can actually try to find the client. So what I'm doing in the server is just navigating the world in order to find the client, and you can just find it here, and you can keep driving it from your client side. So basically this client can be an automatic program or it can be anything that I want. And you can just drive it, please drive it better than me because normally I just go to different collisions every time. But basically the idea is that your server and your client are going to be connected. So every time that you want to evaluate something, you will have information from the server that you can use from the in the client in order to make the decisions from the car. Okay? In the same way, you can generate traffic in your server. So basically you can just put automatic cars working under a system that is called the traffic manager. The traffic manager is an artificial intelligence that is controlling the whole traffic and it's creating the simulation that everything is running like a normal road. And all of the cars that are in the simulation are going to be respecting the system that they are supposed to respect, okay? Then, as I mentioned before, you can also play with the weather and you can actually have a dynamic weather. You can play with the sun position, you can play with the density of the clouds, you can actually make it rain, and you can have that changing dynamically. So for example, in the simulation, we see how the sun is racing, and you see how it's becoming like a daylight in our system, okay? From another perspective, you can also have semantic cameras. So for example, if you imagine that you are creating like a visualization algorithm, but you haven't finished it yet, Nonetheless, you have a system that is going to use that visualization to make decisions. So you can assume that the visualization is actually working, and for that you can use the semantics views from the cameras that Carla has provided. So you can also do something similar with the LiDAR, and here you just have a small example of which semantic information Carla can give you. So for example, here we can see information of the lanes, we can see information of the other cars, you can see information of pedestrian, or in this case, information from cyclists. You can see information from environments, trees, so you can see that actually the semantic information of the visualization system is very rich, which is actually very good for us when we want to do any kind of evaluation based on visualization. Then we can check all the sensors. So for example, here, I just give you a video with an example of different cameras. You can have the front camera, back camera, laterals, you can also have the LiDAR, which is in the bottom left, and you can also have the radar, which is in the bottom right. So basically with this information, you can make different decisions depending on, for example, the LiDAR will give you the distance of the objects, but we will also give you 
some semantic information about this object. The radar will give you more like distances of the closer object for you, okay? And you can play with this inside of the simulator in order to get information and collect as much information as possible. This can be useful later to make decisions based on the information of the sensor because basically if you want to do a completely autonomous car, the car needs to have like a proper way to interact with the world. And actually this is what the sensors are going to provide. Okay? Good. All the features that you can do or you can use inside of the simulator, basically you can create your own vehicles, which is very good if you are trying to test a specific kind of vehicle. You can create your own pedestrians, which is good if you want to test, for instance, the specific behaviors of pedestrians, pedestrians of specific features, etc., etc. And something that I find very, very useful is that you, could, you can do recordings or sessions. Basically, you were looking at some of the recordings, but basically these recordings allows you to re-implement everything inside of the previous steps that you did in one of the sessions. So, for example, if I want to add a new sensor, I can do it. If I want to change the weather, I can do it. Nonetheless, the recordings might not be always perfect, okay? Carla is uh, still in under development, so there are things that are not completely perfect, but actually they are very good in terms of giving you a very good reproduction of what you have done before. Okay, so the big question, how do we use it? I'm just going to go very, very light on this because I will have another video that is based on one of the of the examples that I'm going to give you. So first of all, detecting collisions. Basically, this is the video that I want to give you, but in this case, what we want to do is to make sure that the autonomous car can either detect that a collision has happened or can predict that a collision is going to happen. I will leave you, I will leave this for the next video, so I will just skip this bit. Another one is to test different scenarios. So for example, imagine that you want to check whether your system is going to work in the most basic scenario. So you can start constructing the scenario, you can make the scenario more complex, okay? And you can tell how this is affecting the different sensors. This is very important because in the real world, sensors are very, very sensitive by definition, and changing things might change the behavior of the sensors, and they also might change the way that they are reading, and at the same time, this will change the outcome of the artificial intelligence system. And if you are not completely sure about how the artificial intelligence system is going to respond to this outcome, it's better to be able to test as many options as possible, okay? And also if you want to put a scenarios that are less or more complex or you want to combine different scenarios, you can also do that in Carla. So for example, if you are playing with regulations, you can put multiple scenarios that are normally used for measuring regulations together. Let's say that you don't want to have the car going too fast during a rainy day, even though in the original scenario you have like the maximum speed is 120. So you can actually play that, modifying the different scenarios. And last but not least, testing artificial intelligence. So for example, you have this artificial intelligence controlled by the traffic manager, and you want to check whether a small disruption might change all the behavior of the cars. So in this case, we actually did a small test on this, and we saw that a very small disruption that was a, a driver that was not very nice in general was actually making all of the cars of the system becoming crazy. And this is something that happens a lot in artificial intelligence. When you have an adversary and the adversary just misbehaves, that will create a lot of trouble. And that is very important because we will probably have a transition period when you will have human drivers and artificial intelligence drivers. And this is also something that we will cover in the next video. In the next video, we will cover how this transition period can work inside of the simulator in order to understand how this can work in the real world. Okay. And last but not least, I forgot about this one, testing planners. So sometimes what you want to do is to have a specific algorithm that is going to do the planning of the car, which means that if I'm in this position and I'm going to go to this other section of the, of the map, I just want to define a path and that will be the planner. So what you can do is do test planners inside of the simulators, but for that you need to have the map. So normally what we do is that we have AutoWare that has a lot of maps of Carla and it has a bridge to Carla. So basically we use those maps to test the system of planning. Okay. All the lines of uh, improvements or all the research lines that you can have, 
So basically, obviously, you can have systems that are focused on improving the driving systems, okay? You can create better driving regulations. So for example, you can simulate the driving regulations that we already have at the moment and check whether they are actually accurate in terms of the expectations of, this, uh, of these regulations. And also something that we are working at the moment is how to transfer the information that we get from the simulator to the real world, which might be very useful to simplify the moment that we want to transit from the simulators to an scenario when we have a real car. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you like it. So please, if you like it, subscribe. Um, thanks for listening. See you soon. Bye-bye.